Okay, I guess we're starting. Hold on. Okay, my mic is on. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Yes. So, okay, so let me introduce myself. I'm Andrew Lee, and this is session 2B. And um, let's see. So, we have from now until 345. And I should tell you right now, this is the first time I've ever been in a webinar. So it's all a little bit confusing. So, um, but what I wanna do, okay, I have a script here uh, I prepared. Okay, my name is Andrew Lee and I'm at the Kyoto Institute of Technology and I am right now in Kyoto and it is three o'clock in the afternoon. Now, we have 12 panelists and I think because I keep counting, I think we have 11, oh, Ahmed, you're here. Okay, so I think now as long as nobody left, that means we have all 12. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the list of, uh, so now let me see, I need to share, how do I do that? Share screen, okay. So I, I made a list, Maybe this one, share. Okay, and I'm going to, I made this list. Okay, so now can you see this list? Is it big enough? Okay, I have, a, I have a name list. Can you all see this list? Yes, no? Yes, okay, good. Oh, thank you. Oh, I have to, uh, yeah, I have to remember the chat is on the other screen and I need to pay attention to that. Okay, so now what I would like to do is just check in with all the panelists. Um, so starting with paper nine, I believe we have Patrick Jansen. So can you just say hello and introduce yourself and tell us where you are? Hi, yeah, I'm Patrick Jensen and I'm in uh, Singapore. You don't Great. want us to do the three sentences yet, no? No, 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 no. no I'll no. give you instructions. This is just to I say hi. I'll... All right. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks very much. Okay, Renata, are you here? Yeah, hi. For some reason, oh. I can't seem to turn on my camera. Oh, well, that's too bad, but we can hear you. Okay, and okay. where are you? Uh, I'm in Portugal. It's 7 a.m. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Thank you for getting up. Oh, well, I was already up for the beginning of the conference. <laughs> that was Oh, the wow. Okay, good. Well, thank Pretty you. Much a normal hour now. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay, uh, 257, Yao Lu. Hi, I'm Yao. I'm now in New York State, and it's 2 a.m. in the morning. Oh. It's too late or too, too early for me. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for staying up. Okay. That's fine. 258 Beatricia Beatricia. Uh, hi. Beatricia. Okay, we're not hearing you very well. Uh, it is clear enough. Okay, now that's be much better. Okay, and you are where? I'm from Indonesia and it is 1 p.m. Okay, and that's where you are now. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you very much. 270. Madison Randall, are you here? Yes, I am. Great. Uh, where are you? I'm in Sydney at the moment and it's 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you. 273. Chu Shu Yan? No. Okay, so Chu Shu Yan is not here. Okay. 304. Tom Fisher, I see you. I'm here, good morning. It's eight o'clock in Germany right now. I'm wow. happy to be with you. Yes, likewise. Okay, thank you. 306, Akizuki Yuta. Hello, I'm Yuta. I'm from Osaka, Japan. Very close to Andrew, I think. And where are you now? Osaka. You're in Osaka? Yeah. Oh, terrific, terrific. Mm -hmm. um, now, <laughs> wait a minute, why don't I see you? Oh, really? Oh, there, oh okay, 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 okay. I cannot see everybody, that's why, mm -hmm. okay. Very good, thank you. Um, 351, Yen Huadong. Yeah. Could you hear me? I can hear you and I'm now trying to find yeah. your face in the list. My, my ah, name no is face. Yen Huadong yep. in Chinese. Yen Huadong in Hua Chinese. Hi. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. And where are you now? Where are you now? 
uh, in China. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. No, I was looking at the wrong name. Yes, Yan Huadong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in China. Okay. Very good. Thank you for participating. Okay. Three six six. Julio de Arte. Are you here? No. Okay. Okay. Four two three. Mariam Zare. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Mariam. I'm at Canada now, at Vancouver, and it's 11 p.m. Wow, okay. Let me see, I don't, okay, very good. 443, Ahmed Abzuraik. Uh, hello everyone, this is uh, Ahmed Abzuraik. Um, likewise, I'm also in Vancouver, Canada. It's uh, 11 p.m. here. Okay. Oh, this thing keeps jumping around. Okay, now um, I, let's see, I'm just looking at the participant list and I see we also have 27 attendees, so that's very good. I see a name here, Mink, and I've asked Mink to identify me, but I still don't know who Mink is. Mink, can you tell me who you are? Are you a panelist? Have I missed you somehow? Uh, no, um, had read him. So. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but you're disguised as a panelist. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay, that's fine. It's just a little confusing. Okay, now. So uh, now for the mechanics, uh, as I said, this is my first time. So if I get this wrong, please tell me. Um, there is a Q and A function on your zoom screen and if you have a question on the substance please use that and that as i understand it keeps a list and then we can see which ones get answered if you have something you um about procedure okay use the chat okay and you can also talk to each other on the chat and if you need to tell me something use the chat, although I have many things to be looking at at the same time and I think I miss them a lot. Um, okay, now. Also, we're being recorded. So you don't need to do anything if you want a recording, it will be recorded, it'll be saved somewhere. Um, and you should also have signed a waiver, I think. Um, now, okay, now this is a Okay, hold on, I don't need to share this anymore, right? No, actually I will need to show you that. Okay, now this is a discussion section, not a presentation section. So that means we need to do things differently. And um, so I've really been thinking a lot about how to do this. To have a discussion means that people need to have some idea of what other people have been doing. But I realize that uh, it's a lot of work to look at and maybe not everyone has had a chance to really pay attention, pay close attention to everyone else's work. So here's what I wanna do. And I have to warn you, this is an experiment, okay? Because this is the, we're trying to make it a discussion section when people are not necessarily perfectly prepared. So here's the idea. I looked at all the videos and papers and I noticed a few themes. Um, and so what I would like to do is try and group panelists by theme. And I hope that way we can have a little bit of discussion among panelists. Okay, so now here's the, here's the list. Can you see it? I have a list here and it's got five groups on it. Can you see that? Tool and user optimization and so on. Okay, you can see that? Yep. Okay, Pat Patrick, thank you. Okay, confirmation is always helpful. So um, now, what I so I found five themes, and uh, so and and everybody falls into one of the themes. So what I'd like to do is uh, each person, okay, take a few seconds <laughs> to think about how your work addresses this theme, and try to do it in. Uh, not too specifically because you need, we, I'm hoping for some kind of discussion with the other person, okay? So um, 
And I have everyone's paper here. So you can, if you want me to show an image while you talk, I can do that, okay? So um, look at this list, okay? Tool and you, and I'll go over this right now. Okay, so the first one is tool and user. And this is about, this is because these two pieces of work are about making a tool for a user. Now, what's the definition of the user? I think it varies, but the idea is that it's something that people use to do something, okay? So I'd like to talk about who the user is, what they wanna do and how this tool helps them do it. Okay, then the next group is optimi optimization and early design. This is a popular one. Um, talking about early stages, stages of design and using some kind of automatic uh, evaluation mechanism to um, guide the results somehow. Okay, so we have three that are, have that in common. The next one is packing. Uh, and this, oh, actually I should have changed this. Uh, the first two are really obviously about packing. Um, one was using a 2D packing uh, method for office plans. The third, second one was uh, 3D packing. Um, and the third one actually, uh, it's a little bit of a generous definition of packing, but it's something that is in 3D and it moves around and changes shape. So that's kind of, kind of packing. Um, fourth one is reducing the design space. And um, now these two papers are a little bit different, but the, the, the point is that uh, the design space has a lot of things in it and it's too many things to deal with and it has to be reduced somehow. And so these two papers um, are talking about that problem. Last one is about evolution. Um, and these are, this, again, this is a little bit of a broad conception of evolution. Uh, first one is, is taking a, uh, doing evolution in steps. Uh, so it's not one big evolutionary event, but sev uh, three separate ones in a row. Uh, the other one is not exact, it's evolution because it's reinforcement learning. This, this thing goes again and again and again and learns how to do something. So it's something that develops through time. Okay, so now, um, so what I wanna do is now let you panelists think about this for a very few seconds while you're thinking, okay, think about what you wanna say and also think about if you want me to show an image from your paper, okay? I've got them all here and I'm ready to show anything you want. Now, while you're thinking about that, I want to address the attendees and see if there is anything that they want to ask right now. If they have done, if they have read tons of papers and have a pressing question, we can start with that um, while the rest of you are, while you panelists are doing your homework. Okay, so attendees, there are 32 of you now. Um, I don't think I can see the names of everyone, but I see that there's, an, there's 32 people. So. My question is, does anyone want to ask a question of the panelists right now? You can, let me see, how do you do that? <laughs> I, think, I think you use the Q&A. Okay, but I cannot see the Q&A. Okay, anyone have a question? Q and A, no open questions. Okay, I need to keep this. Okay. Silent majority. Okay, so what we will do is, um, panelists, are you all ready? Okay. Um, okay, silence equals assent, here we go. So I would like to start with tool and user. Okay, so that's 224 and 366. So, um, okay, 224, so who is that? Um, <laughs> sorry, the, I have only, I have the numbers. So 224 is who? I'm in. <laughs> Renata, yes, okay, good. So, um, okay, I will put um, up your, uh, 224. I'm not quite sure I have a, partner this earlier today who wasn't still here. Oh, hang on. So hold on. Your, your interlocutor is 366. Oh, that's right. Oh, geez. 
Oh, okay. So I guess we need to leave you for a little while and me and hope that he shows up. Okay. So, well, that didn't work. Okay. Let's try optimize early optimization. So that's 009, 273, and 423. So 009 is? That's okay. me. That's Patrick. Okay. Yeah. Patrick, I will put your paper on the, I will share your paper. Okay. And then if you want me to show an image, I will do that. So uh, I read my three sentences, right? This uh, is the yeah, moment. Just, to, just make sure you're fast. Yeah, exactly. So um, I am uh, today. I am presenting uh, on behalf of uh, the lead author is Li Kai Wang, and the co-authors are Qian Wei Chen, Patrick Jansen, and Gu Hua Ji. Uh, and uh, Li Kai Wang is in, at the moment presenting in the other parallel session, so that is why uh, I am going to be. Uh, uh, Taking, taking this paper and answer, answering questions about this paper. So this research presents two generative algorithms for supporting performance-based op optimization for building massing design. The two algorithms use subtractive and additive form generation principles, allowing computers to generate and optimize building massing designs, incorporating various site-specific passive design strategies. Okay, Patrick, I'm sorry, I'm gonna to have to inter interrupt you because this yep. is going to take too long. Okay. okay, can you point me to what image you want to talk about? Um, that's fine there, that the, the one, yeah, that last page there is fine. On the right, okay. So let me yeah. see if I can just show you the. So, uh, the, the, so the main aim is to develop algorithms that are highly reusable and that can be applied to different types of buildings. So the aim here is that rather than having to uh, develop a new parametric model for each different project, you can use the same model on many different projects. The development of the two algorithms has highlighted various issues relating to how uh, to encode very abstract uh, and generic design strategies used by architects. So that is my uh, brief uh, summary. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay, 273. I'm sorry I have to use the numbers because I don't have a it's, it's the least difficult way to do it. Okay, so. 273, who's 273? Also, I think 273 would maybe not here. Was, also, uh, also Zhuo Shu Yan. Oh, no, wait a minute, but I saw a note from them. They're here. Ah. Okay, Zhu Shu Yan, are you here? They might be in the wrong room. They might no, be they in the- No, they sent me a chat. They sent me a chat. Okay, Ma Chen Long, are you here? Okay, so, uh, okay, you need to be on the screen, please. I think they might have logged in with the wrong email and they'll, then well, they'll be the wrong. Well, they're sending me chats. So they're here somehow in some form. Zhu Shu Yan, okay, I see you, you are here. Okay, if you can hear me, please turn on I'm your camera. Hello? Zhu Shu Yan? Okay, um, okay, let's just move on. Uh, four, two, three. Modeling and analytics 423 is? Yes, I'm here. Who's I? Mariam. Yes. Is that correct? Okay, good. Very good. Okay, so now I will, I have your paper here. I hope you can see it. Okay, mm -hmm. so now we don't need a complete introduction to this paper, okay? I would like you to talk about your approach to achieving or promoting optimization in the early stages of design. Okay, we know what the problem is. I want you to talk about this in a way that we can compare it with Patrick and Zhu Shu Yen if they show up. Okay, so the purpose of the Flow UI was to bring design data closer to design modeling environment 
And here, uh, Flow UI works with and responds to changes in the design modeling environment, pro uh, processes the design data and represents the result in design data analytics interface. Uh, you can see in figure two. Um, and also uh, we suggested that we need um, um, the tool to support comparison and also reporting. Uh, if you look at this uh, interface, um, you can see the Flow UI interface is connected to uh, Rhino. And um, when the designer is changing, making any kind of change in, in the modeling environment, uh, the tool will show the immediate um, data, performance data for uh, the, uh, the model. And uh, based on that, the designer can um, make decisions. Um, and also the data that are, the designer have access are in form of tables, uh, charts, and 3D visualizations. So they can be able to compare different uh, data and analyze uh, the overall performance of the building. OK, good. So. You have a question for Patrick or a comment. What do you think? You're, you're approaching the same problem in some respect. So, so uh, can I just check? So do we, we cannot un ask questions, right? When I go to the, the chat, the q and A, I I cannot ask a question. Frankly, I don't know how the chat works. So. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. Chat or Q&A? It's two different things. I cannot. Oh, okay. Um, so Patrick, you want to... you're on mute. Okay. Well, the now panelists this is a... cannot use the Q and A to ask. Okay. Oh. So you can only answer it. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, now that's very interesting. Can, okay, can so... I can I make a comment, Andrew, regarding yes. the paper we authored with Maria? Who is this? This is Halil. Oh, Halil hi. Ayhan. Yes. Hey, hi, Andrew. Um, I see two extremes here, or two different uh, approaches to generating design solutions. The path we chose in this model is to let designer sculpt their work, generate alternatives manually, and inform them by taking, uh, in a, uh, taking each design and analyzing most relevant information for the designer and present the information in a way that designer can respond immediately. In other words, we are trying to close the loop or uh, close and shorten the loop of uh, feedback to uh, design sculpting. Whereas uh, I, I, I looked at uh, Patrick's solution before and it is it's very interesting uh, that the, the solution space is generated computationally independent from a, a particular parametric model. Therefore, in our case, what we are doing is not necessarily an optimization computational sense. It is rather than uh, form sculpting uh, informed by, by data. Okay, thank you very much, Halil. Um, okay, I see that Patrick uh, started to use the chat to ask a question. So actually, I think maybe that's a good idea so that we can have more than one thing going on at a time. You may want to do it publicly. I mean, you did it privately. I think that's up to you. Ah. If you do it publicly, then everyone can observe the discussion and maybe jump in if they want. Um, okay, so this is off to a good start. There, there are questions already. Okay, so I'm sorry, we have to move on because we only have 45 minutes. Okay, so what I would like to do now is move on to packing. And I guess I've learned my lesson and I'll check to make sure everybody's here. Okay, 258. Beatricia, I think that's you, right? Are you here still? Yeah. Very Hi. good. Okay, uh, 257, I think that's, who's that, Yuta? Yao, I'm Yao. Okay, oh Yao Lu, so sorry, so sorry, okay. That's um, fine, no problem. Okay, 351, reconfigurable joint, who's that? Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, Tian Hua Dong. Yan Huadong, okay, very good. Okay, so now could we start with 258? And again, um, let me see, I will show your paper. Pick one image and- uh, can, can you show at page number, uh, page nine? 
page it's nine page nine. four page nine yeah. it's not numbered that way but okay hang on hang on okay here okay okay thank that's you that's it okay yeah uh so our research is about the implementation of packing algorithm to achieve the to achieve an optimum net to gross efficiency of office design to get more listable area uh, but with a good base configuration and we use rhinoceros and, and grasshopper to run our simulation it is consists of three six three stages of simulation it is started with the finding the maximum net to gross efficiency by based on the regulation from the context or the site and uh, we we have we have the perp we have the minimum net to gross efficiency of 85% and then uh, for the second stage we try to figure out what is the specific uh, profile of its unit or we, or the units will be act as the components that will be packed in the boundary that we find earlier we find earlier uh, and the last stage is the implementation of packing uh, packing algorithm to get the space arrangement and optimum space arrangement and we use kangaroo uh, we use kangaroo plug in to run that simulation uh, so that's all the overview for my research. okay very good thank you very much yeah, okay uh 257 that yang wadong right sorry it, i guess it's me <laughs> yeah i guess it's you no so i'm sorry i'm getting <laughs> okay I, there's no way no i have too much information to deal with here no problem. Okay. I understand. Uh, it would be great if you can go to uh, figure five and figure six. So uh, the method I'm presenting here is uh, to generate a load bearing lattice structure. Um, and it's able to control the density and orientation of the struts within the lattice. So uh, if you can, if you can see here, I'm densely packing the ellipsoids within the boundary geometry and then after uh finishing the oh it's a little blurry i know that's fine um after you finish packing the ellipsoids uh you will be able to connect all the centroids of the casing ellipsoids and by doing that we will have the final lattice, stru lattice structure and if if you go to figure figure six it will show oops Sorry. It will show the final lattice generated by this method. Um, yes. And then, um, yes. And then if you go back to figure one, figure two, um, the size and uh, orientation of the ellipsoids are actually controlled by an input called tensor field, which is a cluster of uh, tensors with different sizes and orientations and that tensor field is created by finite element analysis tools like uh, the one we're using before is ANSYS. Yeah, I think that's the general okay. idea of the paper. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you all for your sporting nature. Okay. This is an experiment. Three, five, one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, could you hear me? Could you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. My research is about a uh, joint. Uh, uh, this, uh, this research uh, uh, include, include the two steps. So step one is uh, uh, the mechanism uh, uh, about extruded uh, polyhedron uh, movement. The so step two is uh, how to apply. So uh, uh, turn down. So my research is to uh, solve uh, solve the quest, uh, solve the question about uh, how to uh, how to uh, apply. Uh, Using this polyhedron, and um, we 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 uh we are to uh research research the uh, material and uh, the structure uh 
and uh, the other uh, other other aspects uh, about about this geometry. So uh, the general the general idea is is uh, simple, but uh, uh, the 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 thing we do. Uh, 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 sorry, my English is poor. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> okay. It's just a, a, a research about application. As... Yes. Okay. Very good. So, um, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Any, I think we really need to, okay. So, what I guess we need to do is if the, if you three have any questions, please use the chat. Okay, and uh, communicate with each other. Um, the first, oh, okay, good. I see already there is a question. Very good. Okay, so 13 minutes left. Okay, I hope we can uh, get everybody in. Let's see now. Next. Uh, yes? I, I want to use this application to the furniture. Okay, actually, if you have any more um, thoughts, why don't you put them in the chat uh, and do that publicly, okay? Because uh, we uh, need to get on to the next group, okay? Uh, uh, slowly, just slowly. <laughs> oh, um, uh, if you have any more ideas, please use the chat. Chat. Okay, chat. Okay. Sorry, uh, could you uh, type right this uh, screen? Okay, so, okay, here, look. Okay, uh, hang on, let me see now, where is my, I need to show you my, oh, I guess I can't show it to you. Um, on your Zoom screen at the bottom, you should see a button called chat. And when you press that, then you'll get this chat screen and you can send messages, text messages to everybody in the room, okay? So what I think you should do is if you have any more ideas, please use the chat and share them with everybody, okay? chat, okay? chat text okay? Okay, so um, that's okay. Okay, so now we're on to reducing design space. Okay, so that's 304, and I think that's you, Tom, right? Am I right? Yes, Tom, I, I, am, I am one of the two, yes. You are one of the two, okay. Okay, which would you like me to show a, an image? Figure three. Figure three. So this paper there is co-authored. Yeah, if, if you can go closer to figure three, yeah. This is co-authored with uh, Thomas Wortmann. Thomas Wortmann is the developer behind the optimization plugin for um, Grasshopper named Opossum. And we have uh, basically collaborated on working out a procedure to translate geometric tr transcription of hyperbolic paraboloids into algebraic ones, uh, which is essentially uh, illustrated by this progression of, uh, of renderings here. So you start off with a bunch of vertices and straight lines and you end up with algebraic coefficients to put into a formula to uh, reproduce the same hyperbolic paraboloids. And uh, trying to do that is kind of challenging, we, find, we found, found out. And we do this using computational optimization in various steps by which we break down the uh, solution space. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, 443, I think that's Ahmed. Is that correct? Yeah. So we can look at figure one. Okay. From there. Yeah, so the, uh, the general idea is that um, if, when you're using any generative design techniques like optimization, like Batik showed or, um, or any other technique, you would end up with a large number of design alternatives and there is usually a challenge in uh, navigating through these uh, alternatives and finding the ones that that uh, matches what uh, you're looking for. Um, so what, uh, we, what I do in this, what we do in this paper is we we analyze the literature on uh, on systems that 
are used for design exploration. So use systems like if you are familiar with Design Explorer um, or uh, DreamLens, like, so these are all different systems that use visualizations in exploring alternatives uh, and exploring design and uh, designs. And uh, this, the, we kind of look at these systems and come up with different lessons that can be used in designing um, in improving these systems. So uh, I can mention one at, the, one at least uh, in here is uh, we found that most of these systems had an abstract uh, representation for for data like, you know, barrel coordinates or scatter plots, uh, and they are dominant in these visualization uh, systems in the sense that they can be used to filter down the thumbnails or the images of the, uh, of the designs, but you cannot do it the other way around. There, there is not much support for uh, queries that are based on design forms, uh, except for a few systems. Uh, and then there are other, other, other kind of um, lessons in, uh, in terms of um, how can, how is techniques like clustering and dimensionality reduction used in, uh, in build, uh, within these systems? Because it's a large space and you want to reduce it. So uh, clustering is one such, such way to do that. Um, and uh, the, the Beber explores how was clustering used in these different systems and uh, hence the name of the many cases, similarity. Um, I can, can talk more on that, but I think we'll have time. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, any um, quick questions to ask uh, on audio? If you have long questions, I think you should probably use the chat. Nothing, okay. So now, I think uh, we need to go back and uh, let me see, we had 224, didn't have a partner, right? So three, and her partner was 366, which was, uh, I forget, Julio? Okay, 366, are you here? Let's see. Don't say like it. No, okay. Well, um, okay, so I guess then I have the prerogative. Uh, sorry, you didn't present, yeah? Okay, so um, actually this is probably good that um, I'm the one who has to take the place of the shape grammar person because I'm a shape grammar person. Uh, so I'm gonna, <laughs> so two, four, four. So, um, okay, so here's your paper. Um, could you say a little bit about something to a, because you talk about visual programming, okay? And so shape grammar is also some kind of visual programming. So could you say a little bit about this, um, you know, maybe on the, the how, especially how you balance the textual versus the visual? Right. So first off, what, I, um, what I'm presenting here is essentially a hybrid programming system, which precisely joins the both worlds, textual and visual programming. And I think this topic of tool and user obviously fits because um, we're talking about creating better user, um, better programming environments for algorithmic design users, um, generative design users, uh, whatever the classification of the services or the service systems. And the truth is there are a lot of users who actually find programming hard and they do resort to visual programming because of that. But visual programming has a lot of problems of scalability, um, which are resolved by textual programmings and scripts. And what we wanted to do here is uh, sort of create a bridge between the two worlds to allow both visual programmers to have a ladder to scale into, and also for textual programmers who would also like to rely on visual mechanisms like sliders and immediate feedback, which really help the, the work and make it easy. So yeah, you're seeing on the left. Can I ask you to scroll a little bit, perhaps to figure five and six? Figure five. Three, oh, five. Well, yeah, you're seeing the system right there. We decided to use Grasshopper uh, since there are already plenty of hybrid systems. Uh, Patrick Jensen uh, did one right there. Sorry. Because they haven't um, really gone uh, wide in general. And so we wanted to use something that people are already accustomed to. and. Uh, love which is grasshopper and so in order to try and uh, capture the public's attention perhaps. okay good okay so um 
Oh, we only have four minutes left. Let me, let me just, before I continue, let me just check. Is there any panelist who has not said something about his or her work? Any panelist who is present? Um, I haven't, but ah. I haven't been called up yet. Okay. Um, let's see, we have three minutes left. Okay, and you're, hold on, now you are the... Um, uh, 270? The evolutionary simulations, right? Sequential ones, yes. Yeah, 270. Okay, 306, are you here? <laughs> Reinforcement learning for furniture? I'm here. Yes, here? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, okay, so, uh, hold on, I've forgotten your name. Uh, Renata, okay, I think we need to move on to the last group. I'll ask you a question later. Um, or by chat. Okay, so Madison, we have three minutes left for both of you. Okay, so please very quickly say what you want us to know. Okay, uh, I guess if you could have a look at figure one. Uh, the purpose was to propose an alternative approach to designing an urban fabric. We approached this through the use of multi-objective optimization due to the complex nature of any urban tissue. Um, the reason we did this is so that we could break down the complexity of each aspect at a different scale of the urban form so that we can resolve each scale in a high level to a more robust solution before moving on to the secondary or even potentially tertiary simulations. Uh, this allows uh, a higher success rate when um, utilizing multi-objective optimizations when you simplify the design issue or break it up into multiple components essentially. Okay, good. That was very brief. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, 306, reinforcement learning for furniture. Okay, could you hear me? Yes, okay. My paper addresses object generation through reinforcement learning with specifying design constraints regarding object generation. Objects can be generated through a set uh, already object, through the stated state of the art machine learning algorithm, but the problem there is the lack of fabricability. As you see the figure one, there are a lot of gaps and floating points generated through neural networks. As you see the objects, they cannot be fabricated in reality. What I suggest is to use reinforcement learning to overcome such an issue by embedding the fabrication constraints in the process of machine learning, which is difficult to consider with the different machine learning algorithm, as far as I know. We explored the application of reinforcement learning to object generation and managed to generate objects satisfying fabrication constraints. And see figure 11, you can see 11, could you go to figure 11? Yes, there, there you can see the Lego table with the, uh, which is created by our reinforcement learning model, satisfying the Lego block configuration. That's what we did for this paper. Good, okay. Um, okay, we have about 30 seconds left. So um, I think if you have any questions, uh, I guess this chat is gonna disappear. But um, while I porn says, okay, if you see this on the chat, um, you can continue to talk in the spatial chat rooms, but I don't know what that is. So uh, you'll have to find out what that is. Okay, anyway, um, okay, thank you for coming. We, we are supposed to end very promptly, I'm told. So, um, Thank you for coming. Thank you for participating in this experiment. I hope you uh, got a little bit of insight into other people's work and um, that uh, people also help you think a little bit more about your work. Okay, so thanks again for coming. Um, this was an interesting experience and um, hope to see you at other parts of the conference. Okay, thank you very much.